into that argument. It's a question from Linda who says, one, was Brexit engineered to keep the Tory party together? You kind of implied yes, you kind of implied no. And do you think it will succeed in doing so over the next decade? Well, I think that, um, I think we've seen in the last few weeks that the, um, the party is ready to move mm -hmm. on and take over. Uh, and has welcomed broadly the progress that yeah. Rishi Sunak achieved. Uh, and clearly, the Windsor framework isn't perfect, but it's a big improvement on the protocol that went before. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think most people have been pragmatic and accepted that and, and welcomed it. And of course, it's not necessarily the end position. Um, but I, you know, I think it's fair to say that you know, I have many um, Northern Irish friends, and I love Northern Ireland very much, but Northern Ireland isn't always front and centre of. Um, everybody's minds in, in British mm -hmm. politics. Uh, so you know, I, I think having a quite a good settlement there uh, will allow things to move on and for us to concentrate on other things. So do you think this is the moment when the Tory party has finally stopped banging on about Europe? Do you think we've reached? I think <laughs> pretty much. And right, okay. I, mean, I, I was shadow Europe Minister when David Cameron said we should mm -hmm. stop banging on about Europe. And I should say that I was the one person who had uh, an exemption. I think we, uh, we are probably largely there now. And you know, I, I think it's worth saying that for a lot of us uh, who you know, maybe were uh, always Eurosceptic, uh, but um, probably were wary of a referendum, uh, and you know, when, when I was shadow the Europe Minister, our policy was an incremental return of competences, mm -hmm. uh, which I'd far rather have done. Uh, it was the coalition government that had no interest in pursuing that agenda that um, I think helped to increase the, the, the pressure. But for a lot of us who uh, wanted a different accommodation with the EU, whatever it might be, part of the objective was to get to a position where we could have a more uh, mature um, um, generous dialogue with our neighbours, where we weren't always the ones who were dragging our heels saying we don't want to go to that. Uh, and we could actually just be friends and partners and cooperate. And, you know, I did, you know, for me, I, I thought it was very powerful watching that press conference on the Windsor mm -hmm. framework. And it was just like the visible embodiment of that happening. And mm -hmm. it was a very welcome change. Interesting. Tory party, either of you? Were you hiding there, Meg? And I think, was it engineered um, to keep the Tory party together? In a yeah. sense, I mean, it was, you say that it was, it was us who started that. I think it was engineered, as, as Lisa said, uh, if you mean the referendum. Hmm. It was engineered to sideline the hardliners and to keep the Tory party together by sidelining the hardliners. And it failed, clearly, because... Um, because the, the result was not the one that David Cameron had been expecting. And the Parliament afterwards, you know, the referendum result obviously needed to be, needed to be delivered. Uh, and in the, in the minority situation, those people wound up absolutely pivotal, um, absolutely pivotal to um, being able to get anything through. Rishi Sunak has sort of gone back to that position of being able to sideline the hardliners, I think. But it's the luxury that he's got for having the majority. I mean, partly it's his political skill, I'm, I'm sure, but he's also in a much more comfortable position in Parliament than Theresa May was. Um, she wasn't able to do that. I would, um, so two thoughts on this. I would say, to a degree, it was engineered to, to see off the challenge of UKIP. Yeah. The 2015 election. Yeah. 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 Um, and if that seems a sort of ignoble reason to hold a referendum, and I think that is that is sort of raw politics. Um, and I was, you know, I was in a marginal seat. I was very clear that if you could got ten percent of the vote, I would lose my seat. Other people in similar seats would lose their seats. Mm -hmm. David Cameron wouldn't be prime minister anymore. Um, I think, in terms of the future, that's a quite interesting question. So I think Graham is definitely right that for this has sort of settled the argument for now. And the party is, the vast majority of the party is happy behind, even if they don't think it's perfect, where Rishi has got things. I think what happens in the future really depends on where public opinion goes. I mean, if you look at the UK, uh, the UK tracker poll, there's quite significant Brexit regret without that being a majority to rejoin. Mm -hmm. um, so my view is if there's a change of government, you're going to end up not back in the single market or the customs union, but with a closer relationship than the current one. And that will, the Conservative Party will then have to think about what it feels about that. 
and it will depend how public opinion develops so on this question over time, essentially. So I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's settled it long term. I'll see how that evolves. Just, I mean, just.